Hello, amazing artists. It's Kelly Folsom here. Welcome back to the Art Life Conversations podcast, where we talk about all things related to the art life. Today, I'm going to be giving you my top five tips to apply and get in to juried art shows. All right, so where do we begin with this? <laughs> I have been entering juried art shows for, gosh, probably 15 years now. I started entering juried art shows uh, whenever I was in art college. And some of my first shows that I entered, I got uh, rejected from. And then I also started entering other shows and was getting accepted into those. And so it was a very within a couple of years in art college, it was like a crash course in acceptance and rejection in juried art shows and all of the emotional roller coaster that can go along with that. So after so many years of doing this, I have um, developed, you know, a process and a system that has worked for me that has helped helped ensure that I get into more jury art shows than I get rejected from. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. And of course, this is always going to be a mixed bag. And sometimes you just don't know. You can't ever totally ensure that you're not going uh, to get rejected. <laughs> Those rejections will still happen, even if you follow all of these tips. But hopefully the chances of rejection will be smaller. Um, and most of all, just go for it. Just do it. You get in there, you get your hands dirty, and um, you learn, right? You learn by doing. So tip number one, and this is really important, is know your audience, right? Does your work fit in with that particular show? So do some research. Research shows that are available um, there's all kinds of websites out there, uh, juried art shows, artshows.com, um, I believe, many, many more. But do your research. Look at the past shows. What does this organization or this show typically let in? What do they typically jury in? Does your work, is your work in alignment with that? How's the quality of your work? Um, is the style or the subject matter, you know, pretty much in alignment with that show? Do you feel like you would have a good chance of uh, getting into that show based on what you are seeing from past um, artists who were accepted, right? So you also want to check out the mission of the organization or the mission of the show, or maybe if it has a theme, and just make sure that your work is going to fit in to that. Um, let's see, tip number two, once you, once you have uh, a, a good, you know, show that's going to be a good fit for you, tip number two is to select your best work. This might feel kind of um, like, well, duh, <laughs> you know, but definitely select your best work. And sometimes what I'm, what I'm going to share with you, what I've learned is sometimes as an artist, it's a very hard, it can be very hard for us to actually see and recognize what our best work is. So if you're unsure uh, which pieces you've created are your best work, are, you know, the highest quality the best compositions, you know, all the all the things. If you're unsure, here's what I do. I throw it out to my audience and I ask them, I, I choose maybe four images and I ask them which of these paintings um, or pieces of art do you think is the best? Not the one, uh, do, do you... Uh, do you like the most? You know, that's not the question I ask them. I ask them which one they think is the best work. And what's fascinating is usually most of the time, the top voted one is the one that ends up getting in and getting accepted into the show. All right. Tip number three is take good photographs. If you submit a photograph that is fish-eyed or has a ton of glare or isn't cropped properly or is super blurry or grainy, um, you know, has any of these flaws, and if you don't 
follow the rules, uh, the guidelines that the show sets out for you with the photograph, that can be kind of an immediate, you know, rejection, regardless of the quality of your work. So you definitely want to invest in your education uh, when it comes to photographing your work and just make sure that you get a good quality photograph. There's so many free resources for this. You can even get a high quality photograph these days on your iPhone. YouTube has amazing <laughs> tutorials on this. You know, you don't even necessarily have to sign up for a class. You don't have to have a fancy DSLR camera you know, to participate these days. In the past, that used to be the case. Or in the past, you maybe would have to hire a professional photographer. So, and of course, those of you who are in the Art Life School program, you have all of my tutorials for you in the Art Business Course section, where I actually walk you through how I photograph, both with the photograph and edit, both with the iPhone and with the DSLR. So you've got both of those resources inside the community. Okay, tip number four is enter as many pieces as is allowed, right? So, and as many as you can afford. So some of these shows do have a cutoff of say, maybe you can only enter two pieces, three pieces. Some of them might allow you to enter up to six pieces. This does get expensive, of course, but you want to, if you really want to get into that show, especially if I would say, especially if you've never entered that particular show and you don't really have an idea of what might have a chance of getting in, you're kind of taking your best guess. Um, I would say go for entering more. I have been uh, one of the jurors on the back end of ju and, and judging. And let me just say judging and jurors are different. So usually there's a, a committee of jurors that are, are kind of scoring all of the work to allow what, the, what work gets in. Um, and what I've seen as a juror is um, sometimes somebody might, you know, only submit one piece. And maybe it was like, oh, it was really close. That one piece was really close. And at times as a juror, I've wondered like, well, I would have loved it if they would have submitted, you know, two or three or four, however many were allowed, because they might have had another piece that was actually better, um, but they just, the artist just couldn't see it, right? So enter as many as you can, as many as you can afford. I would say, um, into the show to increase your odds of getting in. Okay, tip number five, this is a final tip, and, and that is if you have never entered that show before, you don't really have any kind of history with that show you do, or that organization, you don't really know yet, yeah, you, know, you did your research, you're taking your best guess at it, but you really don't know what it is that they're going to be looking for. So in that case, what I would say is if you uh, paint in different genres, um, let's say like I paint still life and I paint uh, landscape paintings, maybe I do classical still life and then I have like more florals, things like that. What I would recommend is that you actually submit a couple in these different genres that you paint in because they might uh, accept a landscape, but not your still life, right? Um, the thing I would caution you against though is submitting two different kinds of styles of work in terms of how you paint, right? So you don't wanna submit like, here's an abstract painting or a very, Lucy, Lucy impressionistic looking painting versus a really more tight, you know, um, realistic realism painting. So that would be the only thing that I would say there is just make sure that you can submit different genres as long as your artistic voice and your artistic style is cohesive among those different genres. And here's my final bonus tip. This is my bonus tip for you. And that is to take the rejection. If you get, you will get rejected, first of all. Just know that that is uh, 
price of admission, right? When it comes to submitting to art shows and uh, building your resume as an artist, whether that's submitting to galleries or submitting to, to competitions or to juried art shows, rejection is the price tag, the cost of admission. So you will be your work, I will say, uh, and that's an important distinction. Your work will be rejected at some point. You will not always get accepted. I still don't always get accepted, okay? And there's a difference. The reason why I said your work versus you will be, they're not rejecting you. They're not accepting the work, okay? And this happens to everybody. You never know who is actually during the show, um, but you want to consider that. And also, I would say the judge, whoever is ju the judge for the awards, is typically not the juror that is allowing the work in. So I wouldn't pay that much attention to who the judge is. I would pay more attention to that tip number one, and that is researching the, the mission of the organization, uh, the average, you know, kind of what kind of work gets in. The other thing that can help when it comes to handling uh, getting your work rejected from these shows is look at the odds. What are the odds of you getting in, especially if you've never gotten in before, right? So you want to look at the odds. Look at the show history. Usually these shows will say, hey, we had over 3,000 pieces of art submitted for this show, and we could only accept, you know, 300, right? That's 10% chance, if my math is right. <laughs> that is a 10% percent chance that a piece of your art can get in. So know the odds ahead of time. Know that depending on the um, depending on like the the uh, uh, prestige of the show, um, you know, the odds are going to be lower. Your chances are going to be lower of you getting in. Now, it's better for you to try, right, and to do it than to go, oh, the chances are so slim. The odds are so small. I'm just not going to go for it. I'm just not going to try it, right? So you've got to get experience somewhere. And um, so that, that's what I would recommend, though, in terms of dealing with the rejection, because it is hard. The rejection does hurt. I have had way more red Xs on my submission uh, <laughs> submissions than green check marks, right? Um, and they do hurt every single time, and it's disappointing every single time, right? Um, so at that point, it's just a choice that you have to make. You know, um, am I going to, you know, give myself some time to feel disappointed about this? Um, but then, of course, not go into, you know, beating myself up and not go into, uh, you know, I'm just a terrible artist and I'm no good and I suck and I'm not good enough and all the things and, you know, quitting and not trying again. And, you know, all of us probably, uh, most of us probably have some of that dialogue. And it's really just a matter of like emotional um, awareness and emotional control. Pick yourself up, you know, call a friend. Talk to your mentor or teacher if you have one, get encouragement, and then move forward, right? Okay, my friends, I hope that this has been helpful to you today. Wishing you so much joy and success on your art life journey and fulfillment on your art life journey. Uh, if you're new to me, you can check out all the links I have for you below. There's um, tons of free free gifts and um, free courses and lessons and things like that for you down below. And if you're ready to dive in and start this painting journey, then I invite you to uh, check out the Art Life School. The link for that is below as well. All right, everybody. Until next time, I'm wishing you happy painting. Bye for now.